welcome to Comic Shop Team Up. I'm your host, Anthony Desiato, teaming up, as always, with the owner of Fat Moose Comics in Whippany, New Jersey, Sean Hendricks. Welcome, sir. Hey, man. How's it going? Great. I want to hear about this gig you played. You played your first gig in over a year recently, right? No, not over. My last gig, I believe, was October. I did a Halloween gig last year, October of 2020. Um, So then I had two gigs in a row. No. Wait. There's more. I had a recording session for a friend of mine. So I had to learn that song and I went over to his house and we recorded it. And it's for his brother's band. They, they live in Germany. They sent him the music and they were like, play bass on this. He goes, well, I'm really a guitarist, but we can have Sean do it. So I learned the song, uh, went to his house and we ran through it a bunch of times. I tried different. You always approach it a different way. Like, what if I do this? What if I overplay? What if I underplay? What if I so? We did probably about eight or 10 takes of it. And then I had to learn or relearn a bunch of songs for my friend's band. My friends from, well, two of them I've known since grade school. They had a gig. Um, So I worked on that and that was a lot of fun. And then I had a wedding gig. So that's a third thing with the third set of music to learn. And that was really fun. That was a Friday night. And then the very next day I had a gig with the Andrea Nye's band. So that's the fourth thing. So that's a whole, there's a little overlap in the songs, but it's mostly all. So it was a a crazy couple of weeks of, and then during that time, you know, I had to work on order forms. I had to secure my Penguin Random House account to get my Marvel books since Marvel jumped. I had to get my taxes paid up and sorted out. It was, yeah, it was about three weeks of just full panic. But, and I've said this in the past, I love, playing music i hate being a musician a working musician like everything from rehearsing to packing up your car driving to the venue setting up the next part's great the playing part is wonderful and i love it and it felt so good to perform again and then you're done and you gotta pack everything back in your car drive all the way home but then they pay you too so that that was nice especially the wedding gigs you know my days of playing a bar you know 10 p.m to 1 a.m an hour away from home where you get, you know, a hundred bucks and two free draft beers. Those days are quickly winding down, especially, you know, owning the store. When I didn't have this responsibility, I'd play almost anywhere for almost any amount because it was just fun to play. But now it's less fun just because of all the things around it that don't actually involve playing. So, gotcha. but it, yeah, it was good to get back out there. Cool. Yeah. I guess I saw your post about the wedding and I thought that was like your, your, your first gig back, but it's, it's cool that you've, you've been able to keep up with it. Um, with everything going on, I guess that was the other thing that I was curious about. Now that you own the store, now that you have all of these other responsibilities, I mean, is oh, and I sucks. guess, and I guess maybe it's a little bit of both. But I mean, like with the music, is it something where it's like, oh, it's a fun, I got a creative outlet, or is it just like, oh my god, it's another thing that I have to do, or a little bit of both? It's definitely a bit, bit of both. I yeah. mean, you know, like I said, it, it's there's a lot of headaches involved scheduling you know everybody wants to have a rehearsal well i can't do tuesday well i can only do tuesday well you know that kind of thing um i mean i've been doing it for a long long time i started when i was 12 i believe and now i'm 49 so which people as always people can never believe your age most recently you had a little a little facebook interaction with uh, a member of the alternate realities community zach walliner who was astounded that in his mind, you were 47 because he's so far behind on his podcast listening. But yeah, people are always surprised. Well, I, I'm not. I mean, I, I maybe it's because I see myself every day and I remember what I used to look like. But um, no, it's good. I, yeah, it's it's the youthful enthusiasm, I suppose. I'm, I'm too goofy to to grow up, I guess. I guess that works out. But uh, I had a guy in here the other day and... I could have sworn he was like 14 and he said he was like 32. I said, said, you're going to be getting carded till you're 70. He goes, yeah, I know. Like he just looked, you know, people always say I look younger than I am, but this guy, it was almost like something from Ripley's believe it or not. I made him show me his ID. I'm like, let me see. And I was like, Oh my God, you're, you're not kidding. But, uh, what was the voice like? It was like, no, it was um, (laughs) just an average voice. You know, speaking of voices, And I I don't know if you feel like we get a little too inside baseball when we talk about people that we know and like, you know, the AR crew. I don't know if that turns strangers off to be like, they're talking about these people I don't know. But I'm partway through your uh, Patreon early 
release. Yeah. About um the zero hour, zero hour with yep. uh Nick Nick Jones. Yep. I think his voice and my voice are fairly similar. I was listening to it and I'm like, this guy sounds a little bit like me. And he mm. and I have spoken on the phone. I've sent him a few things. He, he's been like a customer, basically. You know, he's bought some things from the store and I've shipped them to him. But over the phone, it didn't really come across. But listening to the, the first part that I got through last night while I was vacuuming, which we all know that's my prime podcast listening time. <laughs> I'm listening. I'm like, man, this guy, I don't know, his inflections and his, the timbre of his voice sounded a little bit like me. I'm not oh, accusing him of, of yeah. identity. Tab. So interesting. Now people are going to think that you are actually Nick Jones, that when yes. they hear Nick Jones on the podcast, it's really just you. It's it's just your uh, your stage Find name. Every guest you've <laughs> ever had. That would be amazing. My God. Right. The, if I was the, just the a master range. of voices. Yeah. So, well, here's the thing about when we when we re- mention people, we always give context. So I feel like, you know, people know enough about who we're talking about. I also wonder, and you know, viewers, feel free to comment and let me know because I assume most, I assume the vast majority of people who are watching our little YouTube series here have listened to my comic shop history or watched my comic shop documentary or my comic shop country and or are customers of yours. I would actually be real curious if there was anyone who, like hasn't listened or watched any of my stuff and hasn't been to Fat Moose, but they just like the two of us talking. Like if if there's anyone out there watching this who falls into that category, immediately. well, maybe, but feel free to let me know because I would be so curious. But, <gasps> oh, yeah, that yeah, reminds yeah. me. Yeah. Wait, wait, I'll be right back. I swear, okay. it's, like, it's right over there. <laughs> Go I got for it. Because I, I can't remember the guy's name, but I That's have a right. business card. That's all right. That's all right. I'll take this opportunity to uh, encourage you. You know, this is our YouTube series. So, uh, you know, if you're not familiar with the podcast that I do, please make sure that you check out the other playlists on this channel and make sure that you check out the Fat Moose Comics YouTube channel. Uh, Sean is actually surprisingly active over there and he's posted walkthroughs of the store and all sorts of fun little videos. So make sure you check that out. All right, what you got? Wait, I lost my, there we go. Okay. Damn it. His name's not on the card. I, I had gotten a call from a guy looking for me to order a few things for him. No, it wasn't a call. Actually, it was through Facebook. Sorry. And so I got him the books. And apparently he had come in on a Saturday when I wasn't here. I think it was when I had that Andrea Nye's gig. And Justin was telling me, this guy came in and he left his card. Where's yeah, the were. camera? So you I, were on this podcast. Yes, I was. Yeah, I forget the guy's name. I have it written down in the special order book because – um. I had ordered him some stuff, but Justin said he w- the guy was in here. I wish I could remember his name. I'm so bad with that stuff. I apologize. Um, and they started talking, and he was like, "Oh wait, that Sean he does with Anthony, and they in the movie." And and he, it turns out he's like, "No wait, we, yeah, I've seen the movie, and oh my god, and and I'm a fan of the podcast, and we've interviewed Anthony on our podcast." Yes, I so I, yeah, it do was you really remember his damn name. I'm trying to pull up the, his name. <laughs> his last name begins with an R, I believe. I'm so, just really bad with this. Well, we'll plug I Read Comic Books podcast. And I, I, yes, I was on there. And yeah, Sean's holding up all their contact info. So a former customer of Alternate Realities, uh, Kara, she is part of that podcast. I don't know if she's a regular co-host or just a frequent guest, but she's a part of that podcast. And uh, she and this other gentleman had me on the show and we talked about My Comic Shop Country a couple years I ago believe, now at this I'm point. I'm pretty sure I listened to that one because I, I be, follow I you know, around. I, yeah, well, I, I know that was one of the ones where I talked about uh, the great friendship that you and I have cultivated and, and how out of all of the shops, you know, you and Fat Moose are, are really at, at, at the top for me. Uh, as far as as far as, uh, you know, it always comes up in the context of, you know, since my shop is gone, it's like, what what other shop out there, you know, would I feel most at home at? And, uh, you know, for reasons we've discussed many times, uh, it really is Fat Moose. I can't find what I need to, so I apologize. I don't have that gentleman's name I, off, I think offhand. It was but. Ben, Ben with an uh, rap, rapin, R-A-P-I-N. Oh, yeah, that sounds that sounds Right, that was, sounds did right. I get it? I, I think you, it? I think you might have. That oh. does sound familiar. See, this old brain still got a few cells to rub together. This a couple of the synapses are still clicking away there, yeah. but uh, I believe it was Ben Rap. Well, if that if I'm right, then hey Ben. Anyway, I want to going back to Nick Jones. So I yes, I don't hear the similarity between the two of you, but that's interesting. Do you know who his voice? And I haven't, I don't think I've told him this, but I know he checks out this show, so he'll know. You know who he reminds me of? His voice, Stephen Amell. 
The Green Arrow? The gr- Yeah. Like when, I mean, not when he's like this, but like, <laughs> let's just Stephen Amell himself. Like if you watch an interview with him, uh, that's who his voice reminds me of, huh. Stephen Amell. That's high praise indeed. So if you sound like Nick and Nick sounds like Stephen Amell, then therefore you sound like Stephen Amell. Yeah, yeah. I am. I, well, it's about time I told you. That was my other, other, <laughs> other identity. It's just, you know, I wear a fat suit as Sean, so I don't want to show off the abs. You know what I mean? I, I need to stay under the radar. I've always, I've always suspected that you could do the salmon ladder workout. I've always felt that. Oh, you, that's the you thing with that the, is that you. the thing with the pegs? Not even the pegs. It's the it's the bars and like you 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 know you're like pulling yourself up oh, but like jumping from dude, one rung to the next. Let me tell you, I have never been good with a pull up in my life. A chin up. Back when in in grade school, I'm sure you guys had to do the presidential physical fitness tests yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I got everything. I nailed the sit ups and the push ups, but chin ups, man. I just it's just beyond me. I, I, I right now, man. If you offered me five hundred dollars. I could maybe pull off like one chin up. I'm just, especially now with these spaghetti arms, since I lost all that weight unintentionally. Look, nah. I remember the presidential fitness challenge and not fondly. Yeah. I mean, I didn't start working out until college. So all through high school, okay. I hated that. And, you know, I think that I went to an all boys Catholic high school, real great bunch of guys. Like it wasn't the sort of thing where they were making fun of me or anything like that, but I felt bad. Like I hated the fact that I couldn't, like I could barely muster one chin up, like barely. That's um, me. That's, that's still my life. That's could why you I make early... it up the rope. I could never make it up that damn rope either. You know, what's funny. I don't know if we did the, I don't know that we had the rope. I mean, I guess we, I don't have a memory of that. I remember that pull up bar though. Yeah. I remember that more than anything, but that's why the earlier this shame earlier this evening when I knocked out my three sets of uh, of eight pull ups and I was like, boom, like it. Quit bro- all right, all right. No, You're it's not a brat. <laughs> it's uh, it's not to rub it in to you, but it's just like for my for the my high school self, it's like what it's a sense of of vindication, I guess. Uh, but I hated that at the time. I hated that so much. Because everybody's watching you too. It's like you're right there, and everybody, and because you're only going one at a time. And gym teacher's there with his little clipboard, you know, giving you the big red X. Like, well, he sucks, you know. Yeah, I was never a big fan. My only thing I used to like in in physical fitness or physical ed, phys ed, whatever they call it, I enjoyed volleyball. I always liked volleyball. It was fun, and archery. Every now and again, they'd actually let high school kids. <laughs> have a bow and arrow which seems like a terrible idea but that was always a lot of fun that was a different time i don't know if that would fly yeah, simpler time <laughs> yeah people used to kick each other to death on the streets it was a simpler time now um but yeah archery you know speaking of green arrow i i always enjoyed that and i have a customer actually one of my regulars and he's an archer like he practices archery and then i always told him like i want to bring me with you he goes yeah it's like, can you pull back, like, you know, a compound bow? Like, those things aren't easy to manage. Like, I forget the what, how many pounds he said it takes to pull that thing back. Right? And I'm like, yeah, yeah let, me, let me do a couple push-ups first. I, I'm kind of at my weakest point right now. I've never, I've never done, done archery, performed You've archery. You've never archered? I've, yeah, what's the, <laughs> I don't know what the correct term, Are but you? I've never, I've never done know. it. But uh, when I did, I had uh, our, our mutual friend Scott on my book club podcast, and we talked about uh, Kevin Smith's Green Arrow. And we had a yeah. whole conversation about this because in, in the Quiver storyline, in the introduction to the hardcover, uh, Kevin Smith wrote about how in his prep for writing Ollie, he actually took an archery lesson, like just to see oh, wow. what it was like. And he wrote about like how hard it is to actually pull that back. Uh, yeah, so, no yeah. joke. Yeah, I've never done my, it, but my, I think it'd be cool. My older cousin, um, he used to have a compound bow. And they had like bales of hay with targets set up in the backyard. They they had an acre of land. So I remember as, you know, 10, 11, 12, like, oh, Jeff, let me try it. And he goes, yeah, sure. I couldn't even heft the damn thing, much less pull the thing back, you know. But I was always fascinated by it. If I was going to pursue anything outside of comic books, music, and drinking myself into a a slow grave, it would be archery. Or billiards. Always enjoyed billiards. I, you know, I, in one of our earlier episodes, we talked about how you, uh, you will call out errors that you see in comics. And I think people responded to that. There were, there were a couple of people who were like, oh yeah, it's like, it drives me nuts too. 
There's another thing that you do where I, I, less so over the past year because of the pandemic, people haven't been out as much, but I know when you see a, a, an especially egregious parking job, you will often document it and post it. And I always find it, immu- it's always one of those things where I'm like, really? Like, like they're so, they're so over the top, but it's always amazing. Yeah. I don't post a picture of somebody's like touching the white line or something. I'm talking about, you know, one tire up on the f- divider or something. Um, when I worked at Anthony Franco's in the, the ShopRite Plaza in Lincoln Park for 26 friggin' years, um, I would see it all day long because it's a big plaza and so a lot of traffic in and out. But I just got to the point where I had to take pictures of it. And somebody once called me out on Facebook like, oh, you can't put up a picture with their license plate. You have to blur that out or you'll get in trouble and then turn this whole thing of people debating whether or not it's legal. I'm like, well, it's in full view. It's their license plate, not their social security number. You know, is that I don't know. But, yeah, I I don't see it as much anymore because I'm here all the time. But every now and again. You know, because this parking lot, it's for the comic shop, it's for the dry cleaners, but there's a deli and a pizzeria next door, and there are signs, no deli parking, because they have their own lot, but people park here anyway to use the deli. And, uh, yeah, sometimes they just park like an idiot, and I feel it's my duty to document it. Well, so viewers, just remember when you're out there, especially if you're in the New Jersey area, Sean is watching. All right, we'll be back with another new installment in one week. And until then, don't call on a Wednesday.